Hey, this video is for two people. Engineers who have a behavioral around tomorrow and want to know everything they need to know in 10 minutes or less, and engineers who want to take our course for behavioral. Let's get started with some theory. Theory number one, if you want to make it to the senior plus level, that's staff, principal, or senior, it's not going to be coding that gets you there. It's going to be behavioral and system design. Behavioral rounds are more likely than coding rounds to result in a down level. Theory number two, the question they ask is actually not the question that they want the answer to. Why Netflix doesn't mean, why do you want to work at Netflix? It means, tell me a story about what you know about Netflix and how you can help. Theory number three, the more junior you are, the less you have to do. In a behavioral round, there's a lower minimum threshold to get an offer or to get pushed over the line for passing. This happens even when junior engineers don't check every technical box. And that usually happens because they show a high level of coachability. Coachability is a combination of eagerness to learn, openness to feedback, and behavior change based on feedback you just received. Basically, if you do something and I ask you to do something different, how different is your second attempt compared to your first? Theory number four. Most senior engineers are very comfortable talking about trade-offs. Anytime in a behavioral round, especially for business-focused questions, it's never a bad time to outline why you did one solution and passed over another. Talking about trade-offs allows you to flex your technical chops the way they do it in executive meetings. Staff and principal engineers are very well-versed in talking about trade-offs. Theory number five. Prep for a behavioral round based off how that company measures culture fit. There's two ways companies measure culture fit. 80% of companies do it like Microsoft. These actually aren't culture fit tests, they're culture unfit tests. These interviewers are just looking for red flags. 20% of companies do it like Amazon. They have a list of specific traits that they look for and they measure your amount of signal you send for those specific traits. At companies like Amazon, you have to demonstrate their specific traits to be considered a culture fit. Common mistakes and what to do about them. Common mistake number one, rolling into a behavioral interview without doing any prep. These rounds were just talking about my past projects. I did those projects. I don't need to prep. Unfortunately, a lot of candidates think that way. And it's a common reason for rejection. Rolling into a behavioral round cold might work if you're junior or mid, but at the senior plus level, the chances of success are quite unlikely. Common mistake number two, the most common deal breaker, a deal breaker is worse than a red flag, it's an instant rejection, is Kevin didn't know anything about us and he didn't seem to care. That doesn't mean you need to fake enthusiasm. It means you need to show signal that you get it. You did your homework and you're interested. These questions that you ask the interviewer, usually at the end of an interview, are a great opportunity to do just that. Common mistake number three, many candidates don't focus enough on their individual contributions. They say we more than they say I. 80% of your words should be about your work. That means saying I. Common mistake number four, most candidates by far talk too much. Set yourself apart by being lean. A great way to be lean is to use an alternative to the STAR framework that we'll teach you in this course. It's called Bluff, bottom line up front. The way you do it is you share the most important information up front. Think of it as starting with a one to two line summary of the entire project. This showcases a senior plus skill set of shielding your stakeholders from unnecessary information. Common mistake number five, being too scripted comes with heavy penalties especially the more senior you are. It's better to deviate from your prepared answers, but still capture the core message from your preparation rather than sticking to the script too much and totally losing points for being too scripted. Instead of practicing a script, practice hitting key talking points. Common mistake number six, most candidates don't mention enough impact or metrics. Prepare at least five impact and metric statements. No one remembers or has access to data sets from past companies. So your numbers don't have to be 100% right. Your best guess is good enough. Common mistake number seven. Most candidates approach behavioral questions the same way when really there's two types, each that deserves its own approach. You got business focused and human focused. Business focused questions are opportunities to share about technical challenges, significant accomplishments, and bottom line impact. Human questions are not. Instead, they're about opportunities 
to talk about failure, learning from mistakes, interpersonal conflict, and frameworks, habits, or tools to make better decisions next time. Business-focused questions must describe scale or complexity, but not human-focused questions. High-impact tips. High-impact tip number one. Everybody has to think on their feet sometimes. Structured improv is much easier than unstructured improv. When improvising on a business question, use the tactic of improvising about trade-offs or the greatest challenge that you faced or teaching your interviewer something because the best candidates tend to leave their interviewers having learned something. Tip number two, approach hypotheticals as if they were tell me about a time questions. Behavioral interviews are about using past behavior to predict future behavior. So if they say, how do you prioritize your projects? Assume that they said, tell me about a time you had to prioritize projects. Tip number three, you can push back. You can reframe a question and say something like, you know, I don't have an example for that, but I have another thing. Would you like to hear that instead? You can also clarify the question before diving in. Just don't do it every time in the exact same way. Tip number four, practice. Practice with peers. As a member on Exponent, you can get as many peer practice sessions as you want for free. You have a little bit uh, higher tier practice with coaches that costs a little bit extra. And you can practice with companies and interviews that you're less keen on. Just do what works for you in your budget and how much time you have and make sure you practice. That's it. So check out the course to get a deep dive breakdown into every single one of these theories and tactics and tips. And I hope to see you soon. Thank <laughs> you.